AJ Styles was about to retire. He's claiming he's getting old, but not quite as old and out of date as this SmackDown quarter by quarter hours video. Welcome back, guys, to Fog Wrestling. But hey, better late than never. So AJ Styles on SmackDown, he was retiring. SmackDown did a decent number. It was an okay number, but today we're going to discuss it. We're going to break it down. We're going to look at the AJ Styles quarter, and we're going to determine... Did he deliver a phenomenal segment or was it just okay? Well, the numbers will tell us that. But we kick off in quarter one, 8 o'clock, 8.15. We've got Nia Jax in there, Bailey, Chelsea Green, Piper Nevin, live angle. This did 2.243 million. It also ended with Nick Aldas and AJ Styles backstage. So, basically... It was the Nia Jax crowning thing. That's it. Nia Jax wins Queen of the Ring and then she gets crowned as the Queen. Not a lot happening. Piper Niven attacks Bailey. Uh, is what it is. Just your average start to SmackDown. I say average, probably a below par start to SmackDown, but the number wasn't too bad. 2.243 million. We're going to quarter two, 8.15 to 8.30. We get Bailey and Naomi backstage. We get Tommaso Ciampa versus Austin Fury. With Johnny Gargano and Grayson Waller at ringside. We then get a backstage segment with Blair Davenport, Naomi, Nick Aldas and also LA Knight in there. So, this went down 4% to 2.154 million. I just don't really think Champa versus Austin Fury is a match that is going to keep a lot of people interested. But that's just me. Going to a quarter three then, 8.30 to 8.45. It was uh, LA Knight and Carmelo Hayes backstage angle. I enjoyed this. I thought it was a good backstage angle. Because Carmelo Hayes did kind of mess up. He talked about LA versus uh, Knight. And he's like, if you want me to face myself, I'd need to look in a mirror. But then he recovered pretty damn well, if you ask me. We also went into Andrade versus Apollo Crews, which... I can't imagine many people would be interested in, seriously, but this did go up 4%, so we're back up to 2.24 million, so basically we are where we started. Uh, we then go into quarter four, 8.45 to 9pm, it was Andrade versus Cruz, we got the post-match continuation of that, it was Legado del Fantasma came out on the ramp, they got involved, we then seen a bloodline backstage angle with... Paul Heyman and Solo Sokoa, we had Andrade, Angle in there, Cruz getting attacked, and then we got the Kevin Owens live promo, this went up 3%, again, not surprised, you've got Bloodline in there, you've got Kevin Owens addressing the Bloodline, up 3% to 2.310 million, and so far, this is the highest feud quarter of the show, so quarter four, so far, highest feud quarter of the show, and uh, we move into quarter five, it is 9 o'clock to 9.15. The Kevin Owens, Paul Heyman live promo continues. We get the angle with the bloodline. Street Profits make the save. Sets up a tag team match. Street Profits versus Tama Tonga and Tanga Lua. And this went up 6%. It did the best rating of the show. 2.45 million. And it went up 4% in the demo to 926,000. So, yeah, I mean, decent number here. Smackdown almost getting to the 2.5 mark. But uh, not quite. We then move into quarter six, 9.15 to 9.30. Street Profits versus Bloodline continue. We then get Bianca Belair and Jade Cargo and Indy Hartwell backstage. So this lost 4%. Just people seem to tune out here. Uh, can't blame them. Street Profits fucking suck. And then Bianca Belair and Jade Cargo, nobody cares. It's quarter seven. We got a meeting. Nia Jax backstage angle. And then we got Bailey and Naomi versus Green and Niven. Who kills? This lost 3% to 2.299 million. But then at the ending quarter, the main event quarter, the last quarter, AJ Styles retiring with obviously Cody Rhodes out there. This went up 5% and finished with 2.425 million. And it also went up 5% in the key demo as well. So. I mean, solid number. This quarter was the second highest quarter of the show, just behind quarter five. So, I mean, it looks like people stuck around for AJ Styles' retirement. You I mean, give SmackDown credit. The, the People do tune in for the main event. You look at Raw, they're constantly losing at the end of their third hour, whereas SmackDown 
if they put something good on at the end of the show, then people will watch it. So, yeah, I think that extra hour on Raw just kills the, the red brand, to be honest. But SmackDown here, with decent numbers, obviously people were interested in seeing what AJ had to say. Because, I mean, they started off at 2.2, the low end of 2.2. And then by the end of uh, quarter five, at the, the top of the hour, they're up like 200,000. And then they kind of lost that 200,000. But... By the time we get to the AJ Styles retirement, they came back. So you can see that SmackDown, through parts, they did lose a couple hundred thousand. Not in the one go, but over the over the duration of a couple of quarters. But they got it back for the most important quarters, which would be quarter five at the top of the hour with the Bloodline Kevin Owens segment. And then quarter eight with the retirement speech. So, I mean, the, the two quarters that matter, the two quarters were... WWE would be expecting to get their highest ratings. They achieved that. And they only lost like a couple hundred thousand tops between those segments. So, yeah, not bad. Not bad. What can you say? It's consistent again from SmackDown. Uh, we know this now. We expect this now. It's kind of same thing, different week on Friday night. SmackDown just always getting a consistent rating. So, yeah, guys, there you go. That is it. SmackDown, like I said, did a 2.310 overall. Solid rating. And uh, we'll see what they can do next week as we get closer to Clash at the Castle. Anyway, guys, that's it. Catch you in the next one. Till then, peace.